Um, hello and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on Docker and Windows Server 2016. Um, my name is uh, Michael Frith. I'm a product manager and, at Docker um, and I've uh, spent the last uh, ten, uh, 10 months uh, helping people um, trying to make, uh, make this work. Uh, so I'm uh, really excited to be here today and to tell you more about uh, how Docker works on, on Windows Server 2016. Um, my contact info is on this slide, so feel free to tweet at me at Frism or write me an email at uh, michael.fris at docker.com. And we'll also be taking uh, questions later as, uh, as uh, Trish just, uh, just mentioned. Okay. So, um, so what's, what happened with, uh, with the launch of uh, Windows Server 2016 was that um, 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 Docker and Microsoft have been, have been working for the past two years uh, to, uh, to uh, add containerization to Windows Server and also to Windows 10 actually, uh, and then to, uh, on porting, porting the Docker engine to, um, uh, to, to Windows. Can you guys uh, can you guys hear me all right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It looks like some people can hear Michael and some people can't. Um, you may just need to adjust your speaker volume if you can't hear Michael. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna start from the top of this one again. Um. Um. So what? Well, um, so the situation now where um, um, uh, Windows, uh, Windows Server has support for containers and where uh, Docker Engine runs on Windows Server is that um, uh, you can use Docker tools, APIs, and, and image formats uh, for managing 98% of, of, um, of enterprise workloads. So uh, it used to be that um, uh, Docker was mostly a Linux, uh, Linux technology that you could use to containerize uh, Linux, um, Linux apps. But now, uh, even if you work in a big organization that have uh, heterogeneous workloads uh, that require that you run both Linux and Windows, uh, you can Docker is kind of a common language and a common set of tools that you can use across your organization to uh, to, uh, to manage all the, all those apps uh, running on both Windows and Linux. Um, and so at Docker, we're really excited. Like Docker has transformed how. Um, Developers and, and uh, operations um, build, uh, build, ship, and run apps for the past three years on Linux. Um, so we're just incredibly excited to be driving that same transformation and, and innovation with Microsoft uh, um, on Windows Server and, and do, doing the same for, for Windows developers and, and Windows IT pros. Um, yeah, and so I want to emphasize uh, Right from the beginning, that if you get Windows Server 2016 and if you uh, if you get support from Microsoft, uh, then uh, Windows Server 2016 comes with uh, the Docker commercially supported engine. So that's the variant of the Docker engine that we've been supporting on Linux for the past couple of years. Yeah, you get that at no extra cost uh, on Windows Server 2016. So if you have a problem with Docker running on Windows Server 2016, you can call Microsoft. They'll try to help you out. And if they can't figure it out, they can escalate to, to Docker and we'll, uh, we'll sort it out for you. And then the, the uh, diagram at the bottom uh, just shows how Docker sits on top of both uh, Windows and Linux, giving you a common, common API and a common set of tools for managing both uh, Windows and Linux uh, workloads. Um, yeah, and as mentioned, this is something that Docker and Microsoft has, have been working on for more than two years. Uh, so uh, we formed a partnership in 2014, um, and in the context of that partnership, um, Microsoft went and added containerization primitives to the Windows kernel, and uh, with the launch of Windows Server 2016, that's now live and available on your, on your production systems. Um, so the Windows kernel now has the same kind of containerization primitives that, uh, that Docker built on, to, uh, uh, on, on Linux. And actually, Microsoft has also also shipped those uh, containerization primitives in the Windows 10 kernel. Um, uh, so, if you have Windows 10 with their anniversary edition update, uh, you can run Docker containers directly on Windows 10. Uh, then, in addition to the Windows kernel work, um, uh, Microsoft and Docker and, uh, collaborated to port the Docker engine and all the other tools to Windows. So, if you look, go look at the Docker open source project right now at uh, github.com/docker/docker. 
you'll see that there's a whole bunch of Microsoft employees contributing very actively to the Docker engine. Um, and there's even uh, um, one of the kind of Docker engine maintainers is, uh, is uh, also a, a Microsoft employee, John Howard. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Then kind of in parallel to this work on, on Windows and the Docker engine, we've, uh, we've also worked to make sure that kind of Docker Hub, the Docker registry, and all the other tools that uh, you interact with if you, if you use Docker, that they, have, um, that they understand and can, and can use both um, Linux and Wind Windows images. Um, so on Docker Hub now, there's already a bunch of, um, of images for both uh, Linux and Windows. So we maintain Golang, MongoDB um, um, uh, images for, for Windows, uh, and Microsoft also maintains a whole bunch of, uh, of images for IIS, .NET, Full Framework, .NET Core, SQL Server, uh, and, and other images, and, and we're working to expand that. Um, so this is just to give you an idea of kind of the breadth, the breadth of the collaboration and the scope of what you can do uh, if you're a Microsoft technology uh, technologist wanting wanting to use um, wanting to use Docker. So starting on the left with build, um, you can if you're a developer you can use uh, Docker on your um, developer uh, machine to build containers with Docker for Windows. Uh, the Visual Studio team uh, has built plugins for Visual Studio that let you um, that let you um, use Visual Studio uh, to to build build and debug containers. They have a really neat plugin actually, where when you hit a five in Visual Studio and like kind of start start debugging, um, uh, Visual Studio will start up your app in Docker containers and then attach the Visual Studio debugger to the process running inside of the container. And you can step through line by line uh, with Visual Studio the, the code that's running inside of the container. Then we made um, we made a Docker Hub multi arc aware, so you can store uh, Windows Windows based images on Docker Hub, and that's also where Microsoft is publishing the base uh, the base images for for Windows. I'll get into that later, um, and and a bunch of other images. Um, and finally, you can run your Windows based containers in production either on prem on on Windows Server 2016 um, or on Azure or, or or other clouds that will be getting uh, Windows Server 2016 support. Um, yeah. Uh, we had a couple of questions. One, um, does Docker in Windows Server 2016 or 2012 will that will that work? Uh, no. Um, so fundamentally, the containerization primitives are only only available starting in Windows Server 2016, um, uh, and then also in Windows 10 for kind of de development uh, development purposes. And then the other question is, can we uh, play and test things using Docker for Windows or Linux? Yep, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll get into details on getting started, but yes, uh, if you install the public beta version of Docker for Windows, so Docker for Windows kind of has two channels, as a stable and a beta channel. And in the beta channel, um, uh, we already set up um, uh, uh, the, the Docker engine running natively on Windows 10, so you can use um, Docker for Windows to, to develop containers that way. Uh, if you don't want to do that, say, for example, you're on Mac OS, um, or an older version of Windows, um, uh, you can download a trial version uh, that's good for 180 days of Windows Server 2016, and you can just set it up as a normal VM, or you can start a VM on Azure. There's a bunch of uh, different options for, for trying this stuff out. I'll, I'll get into that uh, in detail later. Um, okay, so just to give you an overview of some of the, the technical details. Um, so if you're familiar with Docker, you know that um, uh, like you write Docker files, or you um, typically, and you can have a from instruction where that defines the base layer, the, the base layer that the image that you wanna that you're wanting to build starts from. Um, so on when building Linux containers, you can start from scratch, which is kind of a, like a empty empty user land file system, or you can start from Debian or Alpine or Ubuntu or any number of other base layers where you kind of get a, a working uh, Linux distribution to to base your base your container on. Uh, on Windows, it's a, it's a little bit different. This, this, you can choose between two uh, base layers, and I'll, I'll demo this in a little bit also, but just to give you an overview. Um, the, first, the first choice is called a Windows Server Core, uh, and so Windows Server Core is the version of Windows Server that's, um, um, that like, it doesn't have the full desktop experience, uh, but it's a, it's a complete, uh, complete uh, installation of Windows otherwise. 
Um, so the good thing about that is that um, really any any sort of app that you can make run on a on on Windows Server, you can you can make that run in a Windows Server core container. Um, so like take IIS or SQL Server, or you can install the full .NET framework, Jenkins, MS Build, like kind of all the the classical Windows software runs runs fine in a Windows Server core container. Uh, so the downside to that is that the image is a, is a little bit bulky. Um, so I think the download is um, is a couple of gigabytes, and it's uh, slightly larger when uh, when expanded onto the file system. Um, so that sounds like really a downer, but in practice it turns out to be less of a problem because um, typically what, what will happen is that like as you build different versions of your containers or, or multiple different container images, they're all going to be based on that Windows Server core base layer. And because Docker is so good about um, image layering and, and uh, image uh, and layer sharing, you only really need that big Windows Server core base layer once. And all of all of the containers on your machine, be it be it your development machine or your production uh, system, they're just going to use the same um, Windows Server core base layer that that you get that you get once. So it's not it's not too bad in practice. Um, then the other option is a nano server. So. Nano Server is a new variant of Windows that Microsoft started shipping um, with Windows Server 2016, and it's it's really exciting for for two reasons. Um, uh, and the first reason is that it's it's kind of an example of a, of a minimalist operating system um, that in some ways uh, optimized just for running the Docker engine and then running containers on top. Um, so if you go there's actually a blog post on the Docker blog about this from about a year ago, uh, talking about this notion of, of minimalist operating systems uh, optimized for running running containers. So other examples are uh, CoreOS or maybe Rancher, or um, if you poked around in Docker for Windows or Docker for Mac, you, you'll know that we also have a, a minimalist um, Linux version in there called that we call Moby, um, and and Na Nano Server is another another. Um, uh, example of that. So uh, it's a super stripped down version of Windows, um, which means that um, you have to update it less frequently. Um, there's less uh, security attack surface area, and uh, it's, it, start, it boots faster and it's just easier to, uh, to, to deal with. Um, but there's no GUI, of course. Um, and, and then, so it's great as a, like a base, a, a host operating system for, for running containers, but it's also really great as a base layer for, for your container images. Um, so if you're doing greenfield development, um, then uh, a nano, nano server is a, is a good choice, I think. Um, so because it's so minimal and because they stripped out so much of what used to be Windows, um, you're a little bit limited in the kind of kind of programs that you can make run in, inside of there. But uh, IIS runs, for example, and the new version of .NET, uh, .NET Core, uh, is, has also been ported to run run in Nano Server. Okay, so that covered uh, the two kind of base um, base uh, image uh, choices that you have. Um, then another interesting thing about the Docker implementation on Windows is um, you also have a choice of isolation. So. If you're used to using Docker on Linux, you know that you can lock down uh, running containers uh, with second profiles and, and, and in other ways. So think of uh, this kind of isolation choice in the same way. But basically, uh, when starting a, a container with a Docker on Windows, you can choose to run it either as a Windows Server container or as a Hyper-V container. With Windows Server containers, um, which is uh, on the slide on the on the left. So the two containers um, on the left are running as uh, Windows Server containers, and you can see they they uh, use the same model as on Linux, where the kernel, the, the Windows kernel, is shared between the operating system user land processes and the container processes. But the containers, of course, run in an isolated context, so they have their own little uh, isolated file system reg registry, and the, the process context is also isolated. So that gets you great density, all the benefits and fast start startup times and all the, all the benefits you get of containers on Linux. The other mode is Hyper-V containers. Um, and so what the Docker engine does when you start a container with Hyper-V isolation is that um, as you start the thin hypervisor and then a very minimal Windows kernel, and then the container image is placed inside of that hypervisor where it then runs. Um, um, uh, and the benefit of that is um, at, at the cost of um, a little bit of resource overhead, uh, you potentially get better better isolation. 
Um, so if you have kind of regulatory requirements or maybe you're trying to run a kind of hostile uh, multi-tenant platform, then uh, using Hyper-V isolation might be a good choice for you because you get that extra extra layer of protection from the, from the hypervisor at the cost of a little bit uh, more uh, resource overhead. All right, uh, moving on. Um, this is a slide that compares the two uh, architectures on, on Windows and Linux. So you can see at the bottom, um, on Linux, Docker makes use of uh, stuff like uh, C groups and namespaces and then um, layered, layered file systems to, to kind of make Docker happen and to, um, um, to stage man manage the, the um, uh, operation of, of containers on Linux. So what Microsoft did to, um, uh, to support Docker was they added similar a uh, similar primitive to the Windows kernel job objects, object namespaces, um, and then they also made, um, they also built layering on top of NTFS, the, the Windows file system, and they also made the registry, the Windows registry uh, also now is uh, kind of layered and, um, and, um, and isolated. Um, and then uh, um, Docker, Docker Engine runs on top, uh, either Windows or Linux, but it's the same code base. It's just uh, operating different, um, it's just manipulating different operating system primitives, and it exposes the same REST interface um, on either uh, Windows or Linux that can then be consumed by the Docker CLI, Docker Compose, uh, all, the, all the tools that, that you know, know and love from running Docker on Linux. Um, and actually, um, Microsoft very helpfully also uh, went and built um, something they call a PowerShell for Docker. So if if you're a, um, a Microsoft technologist and you really like PowerShell um, and you're not too thrilled about learning the Docker CLI, then you can use the, uh, the PowerShell commandlets. And they operate, they operate the Docker Engine REST API uh, uh, exactly the same as the Docker CLI. So there can be two guys uh, on the same machine, one using the Docker CLI and one using the PowerShell commandlets, and they see the same view of the world because um, both of those interfaces operate uh, the same um, Docker Engine REST, uh, REST API. Um, uh, this diagram goes into slightly more detail uh, comparing uh, Windows Server containers and Hyper-V containers. Um, so you can see on the left are the uh, usual um, uh, use, uh, user land running on Windows. Then in the middle, oops. In the middle, there's a Windows Server container running. Um, and you can see it's, it shares the Windows kernel uh, with um, with the other user land processes on that machine, but it's uh, isolated in a in a in a container. And then all the way on the right, um, this uh, uh, a Docker container running with Hyper-V isolation. Uh, so you can see it it runs on top of the hypervisor. That's a minimal Windows kernel, and then the container process executes inside uh, inside of that. And uh, like. Yeah. So if if you're a developer, you don't you don't really have to worry about uh, this um, uh, Windows Server containers uh, versus Hyper-V containers. You can build a, um, a container image, and you and then somebody can go run it as a Windows Server container or Hyper-V container. It'll, it'll work either, uh, as either. Um, so it's just um, uh, a choice that uh, you have as an operator to to um, to isolate um, to isolate container processes uh, uh, more or less. And just to um, um, emphasize some of the benefits that you get with Windows Server and Docker, um, um, and I'll, I'll show, show this more in the demo, but um, um, with, with containers, because, because apps, um, when you package apps up in containers, uh, you package up them up in an image where you have both the app and then all the dependencies, the libraries required to run the app. Um, and the neat thing about that, even even if you're just a, a, a team of developers, is you get rid of the kind of works on my machine problem, where I set up my machine just right with all the with all the libraries and software re required to run the app, and then I check in the code, and somebody else checks it out and tries to run the app, but um, they're um, missing whatever uh, configuration and tweaks I did on my machine to to be able to run the app. Um, Docker Docker gets gets rid of that because either there's a Docker file recipe. Um, that Docker can use to, uh, to, to get all the dependencies uh, required to run the app and, and build a container image or just ship the container image, which is a, a fully built 
image with all the, all the apps dependencies and the app itself uh, that, and you can kind of be confident that that will run um, anywhere, uh, no matter what other software happens to be installed on the server. Um, yeah, so like for, if you're on Windows, like uh, with Docker containers, it, you can easily have um, two containers running, side, two Docker containers running side by side in the same system with completely different versions of the full.net framework with different versions of IIS um, and with kind of uh, crazy registry settings or mutually incompatible registry settings. And those, those two containers um, will not uh, interfere with one another and, and, and will not affect the, the host system executing the, executing the containers. Um, so it, yeah, just um, makes, makes it much easier to, to manage dependencies and, and server setup. It also makes maintaining a CI machines uh, way simpler because um, if you have a CI machine that runs CI on a bunch of different apps with different dependencies, all that all that crust can can just be inside of the the container images and, and doesn't leak out onto the to the CI system. And finally, Docker images um, and uh, Docker application bundles are it's, it's just a really great interface between uh, dev and ops. Um, like. Uh, maybe currently the, the, the process of deploying an app is this kind of laborious thing where developers try to convey to operations what are the dependencies required to run a particular app and then ops tries and, and goes and sets up those systems. Um, and then later on a developer changes the app to take on a new dependency and forgets to tell ops about it so when ops deploys it, the app breaks. Um, with Docker images, because all the dependencies are bundled up, um, uh, developers can ship the images or the images can get built uh, in CI and, and then tested by QA and then deployed by ops and you can kind of be confident that, that it'll run. Um, yeah, so this just shows um, a diagram of how um, uh, kind of dev test might work. Um, so on the left there's uh, developers using Docker to build Windows and Linux uh, Docker images. Um, that they test, they can push that to a Docker Trusted Registry or to Docker Hub also. Then QA um, can check out those, or pull those images from, from the registry, test them, make sure they're good, and then uh, those can be shipped to production um, and deployed, uh, deployed on, on production systems. Um, and here's another one. Um, um, uh, like kind of trying to take uh, apps that you're maintaining um, and uh, and like right now where you have all, all these problems uh, ensuring consist consistency of developer and runtime environments, um, you can take those apps, uh, put them into into containers and that just gives you much greater flexibility to, to deploy them because you don't have to worry about whether you can get all those dependencies installed on the, on the environment where they need to run as long as Docker engine is there. Um, you can um, you can be confident that uh, that the app will run. All right. Um, yeah. So some of some of you may know that um, we have a product called uh, Docker Data Center. Uh, so Docker Data Center is a um, uh, it's a system for managing. Uh, uh, Running, uh, building, running, and and shipping uh, containerized apps. So it gets, gives you a GUI, and it gives you um, kind of user management and role-based access control that ties into your access directory, um, uh, so that you can manage access to apps, images, uh, and so on. Um, uh, so uh, that. It's already a great product for managing um, uh, Linux containerized workloads, and we're, we're working very hard to also enable that on, on Windows, um, and we'll be, we'll be demoing that in, um, in Q4 uh, this year. And uh, yeah, we're working very hard to, to also make that work for, for, for Windows. Um, yeah. And yeah, and the neat thing, once we get it working on both uh, Linux and Windows, um, then Docker Data Center can be that kind of one pane of glass that, that you um, administrate and, uh, and monitor both your Linux-based and Windows-based um, uh, Dockerized applications. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, just give you a, to a drill into how, what Docker Data Center is in, in slightly more detail. Uh, there's kind of two main components. There's the Docker Trusted Registry, which is a, a kind of hardened um, uh, version of the Docker Registry uh, that you can install on-prem or in the cloud. And then that runs alongside the Docker Universal Control Plane, which is the, the graphical uh, UI uh, for managing uh, both images and um, and, uh, and container OS apps uh, running on top of a set of either Lin uh, or both uh, Windows and, and Linux uh, compute nodes. Yeah, and as I mentioned uh, in the introduction, um, with the launch of Windows Server 2016, um, the partnership that we have with Microsoft means that if um, if uh, you're getting support for Windows Server 2016, uh, you also get support for Docker CS Engine. Um, so, um, yep, you can uh, get uh, help from Microsoft uh, with your Docker workloads, and they can escalate to us, so we, we can also help you if, uh, if Microsoft gets stuck. And that comes with all version of, versions of Windows Server 2016, data center standard and, and essentials. All right. Um, I'll, uh, I'll uh, do some uh, some demos now. Um, so let's do that. All right. So so as as I mentioned, um, there are a couple of ways that you can get started developing uh, Windows containers. So if you are on Windows 10 and you have the anniversary edition update, by far the easiest is to install Docker for Windows. Um, uh, and that sets you up. And if you install the, the, the beta, the, uh, if you use the beta channel, then that gets you access to both a Linux container development environment and a Windows uh, container development environment. So you can see I have Docker for Windows running down here. Um, and there's now, we now have a toggle that lets you switch between um, uh, Linux and, and Windows container development. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's uh, the, the fastest way to get started. So if you plan to do a lot of Windows container work, it might be worth it to set up a uh, Hyper-V VM, which is actually what, I, what I've done here. So I run a, a Windows Server 2016 VM on, on my machine. And then you can see if I do Docker version, um, um, I'm, my client is on uh, Windows, uh, not surprisingly. That's the CLI, but also the engine is running on Windows. Um, and so in this case, it's running inside of that uh, Windows Server 2016 VM. And so the way I set it up is that um, I basically just make the Docker Engine API inside of the VM available to my Windows 10 client. Uh, and then I set the Docker host uh, to point to that Engine API, and then I can, uh, I can use uh, the Docker Engine from uh, Windows 10. I'll, I'll go into uh, more details about the installation options uh, later. But so you can see I can do Docker images. Um, it's not very nicely formatted, but um, you can see the two uh, two images that I, uh, the two base layers. There's Microsoft Nano Server, which is uh, about 800 uh, megabytes unpacked, and then there's Windows Server Core, which is uh, slightly larger. Um, so to run uh, my first uh, container, I can do Docker run dash ti Microsoft Nano Server PowerShell. And that, that'll then uh, start up a, a, a nano server container. You can see it starts up pretty pretty quickly, and now it's ready. Uh, I can do it there. Uh, so you can see this is kind of a clean uh, clean um, uh, Windows install um, running in a, in a containerized environment. Um, so for example, if I were to write a file in here um, into a text file, um, see so now I have this file here. Um, and then I'm going to go to a, a dip, I'm going to open a different console win window, and uh, I'm going to run another uh, another nano server container, um, and do there. And you can see there's no uh, there's no test file inside this one, right? So running multiple containers on Windows has the same semantics as on as on um, as on Linux. They run fully isolated environments. The file system is isolated. The registry is isolated, and the process the process context is uh, is isolated. So if I do get process, I only see the processes running inside of this container. Um, yeah. So this is um, 
So this is running inside of a nano server. So remember that that's the kind of a minimal a minimal version of um, of, of Linux. Uh, so just to give you an idea of um, how it's smaller, um, we can take a look at how much stuff is inside of System32. So this will count out the number of files in the system32 directories. You can see in nano server is 522. Uh, so I'm now going to start another console window, um, and then um, I'm going to start a Windows Server core-based container. So remember that that's kind of the base layer, the more uh, um, the kind of more standard um, uh, Windows base layer. Uh, Windows Server core. Oops. Set my Docker host. Um, so that'll start a uh, container based off of uh, Windows Server Core, um, hopefully, yep, there we go. And then uh, I'll just do uh, run the same command inside of here, so I'll do get child item Windows System32. So that's uh, 1,946 compared to 522 in, in Nano Server. Um, so just to give you an idea of how um, how Nano Server is kind of uh, pat down minimal minimal version of Windows with uh, much less much less uh, stuff in it. Um, all right, I'm going to exit these guys. Um, yeah, actually I'm just going to start up another one again uh, just to. Uh, Give you an idea of how. So this now I'm back inside of a nano server container. Uh, uh, here I'm, I'm on the host system, so I can use uh, all the normal Docker uh, Docker commands that you know and love, like Docker images, Docker ps. You can see this is the the, um, the nano server container running running in the other window. Uh, I can Docker exec into it if I want. So I can do Docker exec. Gi. Michelle. Um, and now I have uh, two two shells inside of this this guy. So uh, if I write a file, and do it there in the other window, um, the the file showed up. So I have two um, two shells in, inside of the same container. Anyway, that's just a small party trick. Um, um, all right, so that showed just the basics of, of running uh, running containers um, uh, from from base images, the nano server and Windows Server Core base images. Um, like another important aspect is how how do you build uh, container images, and and it's again it's exactly the same as as on um, on Linux. So you write uh, Docker files, and what I have here is a. Um, uh, Docker files that builds an extremely simple uh, Windows container. Uh, so you can see uh, they use the same from instruction, and in this case, just start from Microsoft Nano Server, and they just set the command to execute uh, when this container is run. Uh, so I can do Docker build, let's call it high. Um, so I built, built my container, and, that, and then I can run this. And it prints um, hello world, hopefully. So that Spun up a container, print it, stand it out, and then and then exit it. Um, exactly the same as on Linux. All right. Um, the final thing I wanted to show is uh, is a more uh, complicated demo um, that shows uh, running um, uh, kind of a multi-container app uh, with Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is a development tool that we have for running kind of more complex apps that require spinning up multiple containers, uh, hooking up all the networking um, uh, to, uh, to, make the, to make the app run. Uh, so I have that here. It's called, the app is, uh, is mu it's called Musicfall, and it's basically the ASP.NET team's uh, sample app for demoing ASP.NET Core. Um, 
So in preparation for the launch, um, uh, I, the, the Skype Microsoft who, who worked on this and I also uh, spent a lot of time on it, uh, but um, we basically just took that sample app, which is just supposed to run uh, on, on a normal Windows uh, install in, in user mode, and, and then we, uh, we made it run inside of Windows containers. Um, so, and so while it took a while uh, to get working, uh, the, the, the outcome is fairly simple actually, um, and hopefully it'll be simple to set up in the future for other people. But we added a Docker file um, and then a Docker Compose file. So you can start by looking at the, at the Docker file. Uh, so this is more complex than the one that I showed, I showed earlier. Uh, so you can see we start from uh, Microsoft.net. Uh, so this is one of the base image, uh, kind of uh, the, the images that Microsoft publishes on Docker Hub. Um, and so this is a base image based on Windows Server Core, and it then has .NET Core uh, installed inside of it. Then you can see um, I set the shell. So this is actually a new instruction that we added to the Docker file syntax for for Windows. Um, so kind of finally uh, on. Windows, the default shell is uh, cmd.exe. So that's basically the shell from MS-DOS, more or less um, in, the, in the late 80s. Um, so with the shell instruction, that's a way for you to say, um, hey, when building this Docker file, um, I want to use PowerShell for the rest of the instructions in, in this file, uh, which make, makes it uh, way less uh, for both and, and awkward. Um, so I set the shell to PowerShell. Um, then I start adding in, uh, well, I create a, a directory, and I set the working directory to be music store. Then I start adding in uh, the project.json. So if you're more familiar with NPM, that's kind of like requirements.txt or the gem file with, with Ruby, like it has all the packages required to run the app. Um, then I run .NET restore, um, which is like bundle install or whatever. Uh, so that pulls down all the, all the NuGet packages. Finally, I add in the rest of the source code and then I do a .NET build of the, of the music store app, and then the, the app is kind of ready. So finally, I just tell what port is, what port is this guy going to listen to, and then the CMD instruction is um, uh, .NET run. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's the Docker file. So that, that basically builds the kind of application container with uh, the, my ASP.NET web application uh, based on, on .NET, um, the .NET base image. Then the other file we added was a Docker Compose file. So if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, it's, um, it's a way to specify how a set of containers are supposed to start up and be hooked together uh, so that you can uh, debug them in, in concert. Um, so it, has, it defines two services. That's a DB service, so that's the kind of backend database. Uh, and in this case, it's just based off of an image. So this is another image that Microsoft publishes on Docker Hub. It's uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2016 Express. Um, so that's going to be my backing database, and I make port 1433 available um, so I can uh, see what's going on in the, in the database. Then the other service is the web service, so that's, the, that's my SP.NET web app. And you can see I tell Compose to just build from the Docker file that I just showed you. And then I set up some environment, and, and I set up the uh, the port where the where the app is going to be uh, where the app is going to be running. So with those two files, um, you can see I have them here: uh, the Docker file and the Docker Compose file. Uh, I can do um, I can do uh, see Docker Compose build. So you can see I run Docker Compose uh, build. Uh, so that'll that'll build my app, and you can see Docker Compose. Is, okay, the DB is just an image, so I'm not going to be building that. And then it builds the, the web container, and uh, I already built this before the before the webinar, so um, it's just using the cache. So the build was very fast. Uh, but you can see this is Docker just following that recipe in the Docker file to uh, to build the, the container image. All right, so with that built, I can do um, Docker compose up. Like this, so you can see I run Docker Compose, and I specify the Docker Compose file, and then I use the up command, and I uh, force recreating the containers. It's just a detail uh, to um, to show you how it's uh, how it's working. So that'll uh, create the DB container and the web container, and then it hooks up the networking, so that the web container can talk to the SQL Server container. 
and hopefully that should be coming up in a couple of seconds. Uh, let's see. Yep. So the app is up now, and I can hopefully open it in the browser. Should be loading. Um, and really, the beauty of this is that I can I can now run this app. Uh, like I don't I don't even have to install SQL Server on this system. I don't have to install this particular version of .NET that's required. Uh, it's all of that complexity is just maintained inside of the inside of the Docker containers. Uh, and you can see the app's running. It's just a simple um, uh, CRUD app uh, that shows off um, um, uh, ASP and that MVC. Um, and just to see, to give you an idea of how it's working. So I'm running a SQL Server Management Studio. So that's running on my Windows 10 client, but I can connect to the um, I connect connect to the SQL Server running inside of the uh, container like this. Um, and uh, the music store database is there, and you can see all the tables the tables that were created. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was just to give you an idea of like. Uh, how how all this stuff also works uh, really well on on Windows, and um, yeah, actually the uh, the SQL Server part was like the first time I got I uh, so I built some of the first SQL Server based images before Microsoft started publishing them, and it was just uh, it was so uh, it was so great to get to get that running. Um, like I don't know if any of you have ever spent time installing SQL Server, but it like takes a long time and uh, it's pretty pretty finicky. And if somebody then messes up the environment, um, then you have to spend a whole bunch of time debugging it and figuring it out. So the first time I got a SQL Server image going, I just sat, sat there spinning up SQL Server instances, as you can see I'm doing now. And it takes us about a second, but then you have a fully self-contained, pristine uh, SQL Server instance uh, running. And I could log into one of those and load up, and, um, and my colleagues working on one running beside it uh, would not be affected. Uh, so just really neat. You can see in Docker PS, and there's uh, three uh, three brand new SQL Server Express instances running side by side. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had for the demo actually. Um, so let's just get back to the presentation. Um, yeah, I just want to. Um, oh yeah, so this is how this is how you can get started with uh, Windows containers. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a, there's a couple of options. Um, if you're on Windows 10 with the Anniversary Edition update, um, then the simplest uh, option is just to install uh, Docker for Windows and, and choose the public public beta channel. That'll set up um, Windows uh, uh, Windows Docker daemon also. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can get a um, Windows Server 2016 uh, ISO and just install it in a in a in a VM using Hyper-V or VirtualBox or VMware, whatever whatever uh, makes you happy. Uh, and as I mentioned, that's a free 180-day trial of um, Windows Server 2016, so you don't you don't have to pay for anything. Um, you can also um, use Azure. So uh, Windows Server went uh, GA yesterday. And with the GA, um, uh, uh, it's now available on Azure too. So that's a super easy way to get started. If you're on Mac OS or Linux or an older Windows version, then again, just get a hold of the Windows Server 2016 ISO, and then uh, you can you can set it up in VirtualBox and VMware. Uh, once you have Windows Server 2016, uh, the install of Docker Engine is, is very simple. as two PowerShell commands. Uh, you install a module and then a package um, that sets up uh, the Docker engine. Um, if you want kind of more, slightly more elaborate instructions, I, I wrote a blog post a couple of weeks ago, um, and the link is here. Um, uh, but yeah, just uh, go to the Docker blog and scroll back a couple of pages. Uh, then there's a bunch of blog posts from the from the launch two weeks ago that goes through both getting set up. Um, how all this stuff works, like the, the stuff I covered uh, earlier, and there's also a blog post detailing the commercial uh, partnership that we have uh, that we have with Microsoft. 
Um, yeah, just to uh, kind of zoom out a little bit from the Windows container stuff, uh, we, we're doing a bunch of, if, if you're a Microsoft technologist, uh, Docker is doing a bunch of, bunch of other stuff with, with Microsoft. So uh, we're building something called Docker for Azure, which is still in private beta. Um, but it's basically a, a um, very simple uh, way to set up Docker 112 with swarm mode on Azure. So it's Linux only at the moment, but uh, we'll, we'll be adding uh, Windows support later. Uh, and then the neat thing is that it integrates tightly with Azure load balancing uh, so that uh, you just get a really functional Docker install, uh, scalable Docker install on Azure um, right out of the gate. Um, so if you want to try that out, go to beta.docker.com and, and sign up um, or just ping me um, and I'll, uh, I'll get you into the beta. Um, then we also maintain um, I said, if you're very, if you're interested in Docker Data Center, um, then uh, we have some uh, Azure ARM templates that set up Docker Data Center and uh, Docker Trusted Registry on Azure, um, and those are already in the in the Azure Marketplace, so you can go try them out. Um, in addition to that, uh, I work a lot with the .NET team, both the .NET Core team, but also the uh, the, the the full .NET uh, team uh, to make sure that they get great images, both Windows-based and Linux-based, into the um, into Docker Hub. Uh, and I work with the SQL Server guys. Uh, they're very very excited about Docker, and they, as you saw, they already have a couple of um, uh, uh, Windows-based images. And actually, if you get into the um, if you get into the Microsoft private beta for SQL Server on Linux. Uh, one of the ways that they let you try out a SQL Server on Linux is in a Docker Linux container. Um, and yeah, it's just really neat, um, works, uh, works super well. And finally, we work with the Visual Studio team who are building great tools and plugins for Visual Studio Code and the full Visual Studio um, to help you build containerized apps. Yeah, so um, if uh, if you're interested in this technology, um, go to docker.com slash Microsoft or check out some of the blog posts that we wrote about this stuff when uh, for the launch uh, two weeks ago. And to try Windows Server 2016, this, uh, as I mentioned, there's a free download. It's pretty easy to set up. And there's also the blog post that I published on how to get to running your first Windows Server container. Or you can just uh, start on Azure. Um, then there's a... Uh, uh, um, I just want to give a shout out to people in the Docker Captains community who are working on this Windows container stuff. So there's uh, Alex Ellis, um, there's Elton Stoneman, and Stephen Scherer. They're all doing great work experimenting with Windows containers uh, and kind of building new base images and showing what can be done with the technology. So if you're interested, go uh, go follow go follow their work. Uh, and if you if you build something great, please uh, tweet at me and at Docker. Um, I'll, uh, I'd love to, uh, to take a look. Um, and then finally, we have a, uh, another webinar on the 25th um, where we will be showing um, a tool that we call Image to Docker. Um, so it's a way to take a, um, a Hyper-V VM image uh, and then um, basically what the tool does is it mounts the image and then it, um, it kind of looks through it to uh, see what software is installed and how, uh, what websites are set up in IS and, and stuff like that, and then it generates a Docker file to you, for, for you. So it's a good way to, um, if you find kind of authoring uh, Docker files a bit intimidating, um, this tool is a great way to, uh, to, um, to get started and based off of, uh, based off of a VM that, that you already have. Um, yeah, so that was it. Um, thanks for, thanks for joining and, um, very happy to uh, to answer questions. Let's go back to the first slide. So we have my contact info. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, we have we have quite a few questions. Thank you, everyone, who's putting them through. Um, okay. So Robin asks um, whether it's possible to pull push images to DTR running on Ubuntu. Um, so yes, that's possible. So both DTR and Docker Hub support both Windows and Linux images side by side. Uh, and there's even kind of what we call multi-arc support, which means that you can, um, for the same tag, you can have both uh, Windows and Linux um, um, uh, variants. 
So Google, um, Docker, uh, Multiac, um, I wrote a blog post about this uh, in the spring, and that kind of covers, covers all that stuff. So I don't, I don't think DTR, that, so the second part of Rob's question, um, I don't think uh, DTR runs on Windows just yet, but it, uh, it's uh, one of the things that, that we're working on. Okay, how do you, how do you update, uh, Jan asks, uh, how do you update Windows containers? Um, so there's kind of two ways you can go about that. Um, our recommendation is to use the Linux methodology, which is basically, so every time there's gonna be a Windows update, Microsoft will publish a new version of the, of the base layers, like um, Windows Server Core and Nano Server. So I think the best option is really to um, uh, uh, pull those and then rebuild, rebuild your, your, your container on top of the updated base layer, and then, uh, and then uh, update it. Because that kind of gets you, kind of gets you the whole paradigm of immutable infrastructure. Um, so that you don't have these pet containers which have accreted uh, uh, layers, layers of updates that, that are not really tracked in, in the build. So that, that's, 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 I think, our recommendation. Like, uh, get the updated base layer and, um, and rebuild your container. Uh, but you can actually also run uh, Windows Update inside of, a, inside of an existing container image. And then you can commit the, you can commit the change. And so you just kind of get the Windows Update as an additional layer on top of the other layers that were built when you, when you built the app image. So, so both of those should work. Um, oh, is it, so uh, Tom asks if there's a, if there's a GUI for this. Um, so um, by, by default, the, the way you can do this is using the Docker CLI, which works in any shell, or you can use the PowerShell commandlets that I mentioned that Microsoft has built. Um, and then for GUIs, um, we do have a GUI called uh, Kitematic um, that uh, shows some of the stuff that's going on with your Docker engine. And then the other option is to get Docker Data Center, which is the full management GUI that you can use to, um, that you can use to manage um, uh, containers. Can you have, okay, so Sudakar asks if you can have two .NET frameworks running side by side in a single Windows container. So if, if you can install them side by side on Windows normally, then you can also install them side by side in a Windows container. Uh, but it's just, gonna, it's just gonna be like a fairly large, uh, large container. So I, I think I'd recommend, trying, if, if you have, like I'd, you can do that, but uh, I'd recommend splitting out, splitting out the app so that you have uh, the .NET 4.0 part of your app in one container and the .NET 4.5 part of your app in, in a different container. But like fundamentally, if you can make them run side by side outside of a container, they'll also write, run side by side inside of a container. Please, so James asks, please elaborate more on MSI support for Docker on Windows Server 2016. So MSI support, so MSI is uh, kind of the, the way programs are typically packaged for installation on, on Windows. Um, so when you write, so I'm guessing the question is about like how do you use MSI installers and Docker files? And basically what, what you have to do when you author the Docker file is to invoke the MSI installer in like a head, headless, uh, headless mode so that you, um, so you can install um, the software without having to click through a, click through a GUI. Um, and there's a bunch of examples of how to do that. So um, yeah, check out some of the um, uh, sample Windows Docker files that are already there, like the ones that we built for uh, Golang and uh, um, MongoDB, uh, um, and also for SQL Server, actually. Uh, you, you basically have, uh, and a, and a, another good resource for this is actually uh, Chocolate Tea. So Chocolate Tea is, is a kind of package management, uh, third-party package management system for, for Windows, and they spend a bunch of time trying to automate the installation of uh, software, also MSI-based software on Windows. Uh, so their scripts is a good resource for figuring out how to, uh, how to run all sorts of weird MSI installers in a, in a headless manner from, from inside of a Docker file. Okay, so Damien asks, will RTP work for Windows Nano and Windows Server Core images somehow? Um, uh, the answer is no. Uh, it's not like the RDP, uh, the RDP daemon is just not running inside of the containers. Um, so right now it's focused on kind of server-side apps that, that can run without a GUI. 
Uh, having said that, uh, in early tech previews of Windows Server 2016, IDP actually worked from inside of containers. Uh, so possibly this is something that Microsoft might look at uh, re-enabling later. But for now, it's focused on server-side apps that do not require, uh, require GUI or require uh, remote desktoping into, uh, into containers. Um, thank you. I think that concludes the Q&A session. There were a few questions that were repeated, um, whether or not folks would be getting the slide deck. We will look to put this slide deck in SlideShare and posting it on the docker.com backslash Microsoft page. Also, uh, there's some folks who would like to register for the Image to Docker tool webinar that we're hosting on October 25th. You can register for that um, on docker.com in the resources page. Uh, you'll see webinars and you can also, it'll also be posted on the docker.com backslash Microsoft page for you to register. And we'll follow up with everyone on the call with the recording of the webinar that you attended today. Um, as well as some additional information on the, the follow-up webinar. So thank you, Michael. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Trisha. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, and have a great day.